since the dawn of mankind with hard workers collecting food, killing animals, making huts. It's Stone Age. Welcome back to the Board Game Closet. My name's Jimmy. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then make sure you click that button. We've got a new video that we put out every single Thursday, and if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and share it. Today, let's talk about the components that you get with Stone Age. Now, this is a game that's older, right? I can't remember when it first came out, but it's been reprinted a whole bunch of times. And I know recently it was out of stock everywhere, but now they got a new print run in. So I wanted to do this video in case you've been curious about this game. Now you can see what it's all about. So check out the components that I got in this version of the game. Now, they might have changed in the newer versions, but this is the version that I've got. And you can see that you get a pretty decent sized board. There are definitely bigger boards nowadays, but this is a, a decent sized board. You get a uh, player. Uh, boards right here, your own personal player boards. You get money token or food tokens here. You get wood, brick, stone, gold tokens. Um, uh, you get these cards, civilization cards, and then you get the caveman uh, meeple type peoples. Um, you get a first player token that in my version of the game is uh, almost worthless, so the little standee doesn't work, so we just we lay them down all the time. And then, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> then you get um, some dice, which this is half of the game right here is rolling these dice. And then you get a, a nice little leather cup in this version and some cubes. The components on this game are great. I think the artwork is amazing. It fits this style. You look at this game, you instantly want to get pulled into this little world down there that they're in with their little huts and their wood and their stone, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, the player boards are great. It gives you all of the information that you need right on the card uh, so that you can understand it on your player board. So if you don't know how much something is divided by or if you don't know how much your uh, civilization cards are worth, it's put right there in front of you. It's super easy. The icons in this game are really easy to understand, I think. It's not that complicated. Once you understand the basic premise, you get into it. They did a good job with everything when it comes to this game. There's a, there's a reason this game is done so well. It's pretty simple, and the components that you get with it are really nice. So how do you play Stone Age? Um, the instructions to this one, you're not going to have that hard of a time getting into this. I actually watched a, a YouTube a tutorial video on how to play the game first, and then I uh, just got into the rule book. I also went on Board Game Geek, and I just printed out a bunch of extra player aids for me. And then this helped me get started in the game the first time. It helped me understand how to play this with just two players or three players instead of the full player count. And uh, so I highly recommend, because this is an older game, there's a lot of helpful material out there to get you into the game. So go to BoardGameGeek.com, click on Files, and then you can find a whole bunch of stuff to help you play the game. So let me give you a basic run through, maybe one round of the game so you can figure out uh, how the game plays and if this is going to work for you and your gaming group. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to get five of these cavemen, five cavemen and 12 food. Now, in this game, you have to feed your guys every single round. And so you have to keep that in mind as you play the game. How much food do I have because I need to feed them? And so on your turn, you are going to simply one at a time place as many of your cavemen out as you want to on different various areas of the board. And so you take a turn and you say, okay, I'm going to place three of my guys there. Then somebody else goes, somebody else goes. When it comes back to your turn again, then you can place somewhere else again if a spot is available. And so you keep going around the board, placing one set of people at a time. Now that could be one or that could be multiple. And then once all of your dudes are out there, then now it comes time for you to pull your guys back. And so depending on where you place them, you will either take an immediate benefit, which is one of these three areas here, or you have to roll to see what you get in any of these areas that are up here. So let's talk about the, the, the closer in ones right here. So the first area that you can go to is you can go out into the field and you can plant a field. And if you do that, then you're going to raise your food level over here. And now from this point on in the game, you always have one free food every round. 
The second place that you can go, the Love Shack, as everybody calls it, is a place where you can gain an extra caveman. So you send two guys down there, two meeples down there, and then poof, at the end of the round, you get another caveman. The only issue is now you have to feed this guy, so keep that in mind. And then the last place that you can go in this area is a tool. And so you can get a permanent tool that you have into your possession, and this helps you modify a die roll by one. So if you have one tool, you can up a die roll by one. If you have multiple tools, so this goes all the way up to four, and there's all kinds of slots on here, so you can just keep getting tons and tons of these. You could modify die rolls like crazy if you got a bunch of these tools. And now the other places at the top, these are all places that you have to roll for. So you don't just automatically get something, but you have to roll to see what you get. So the first place that you can go is food. And as many people as want to can go and hunt for food. And so you place all of your guys out there. And let's say that I put two uh, cavemen out there. I would take two dice, drop them in the cup, roll it, and then I would add up my results. So I got a five and a three, so that's eight. And on your little player board, it tells you that food is divided by two. So I got eight, divide that by two, I just got four food for my two guys. That's, it's as simple as that. The next place is wood, then you have brick, stone, and gold. And these are all the same exact way. You take the number of guys that you sent there, you take that many dice, put it in the cup, roll it, add up your number, divide it by the number. So if you went to gold, it would be divided by six. So it's pretty difficult to get gold. And so thematically that makes sense all the way down. The cheapest resource that you can get is wood. Okay, so now what do you do with these resources that you've got? You can do two things, right? Or probably more than that, but I'm gonna tell you about the main two things that you can do. You can build a hut. So down here on the bottom, they have huts that you can build and they have a recipe or whatever requirements to buy this hut. And so to buy this hut, I need a brick, a stone, and a gold. If I pay those resources in, then I would get 15 points and I place this down on my mat. Hooray, I just scored 15 points. I move my uh, little tracker up here, I go up to 15. Now there's other ways that you could get some, like this one says I need five resources and they have to be of four different kinds. Um, this one says I can, I can put any number of resources I want between one and seven of any kind. And um, that's pretty much what all of them are. It's some mixture of that, either uh, whatever you want to put in based off of the number or a specific one, like this is two wood and a gold. Then the other thing that you can buy are civilization cards. And these cards give you points, give you an immediate benefit and a benefit at the end of the game. And their costs go up. So there's a one, you can, if you place your dude here, then when it comes time for you to pull him back, you pay one resource of any kind, and I get this card. Um, and then it goes up, two resources of any kind, three and four. Once a card is taken, and the next round, these slide down, so they, in essence, get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper until somebody buys them. But if a new card comes out at four, and you really, really want it, then you can place your dude there, unless nobody else has, pay the four resources, and get this card. Now these are probably the most overlooked part of the game when you first start because people don't realize how many points you can get off of these. And this is probably the most complicated part of the game to explain, although it's really not that complicated. So at the top of the card, you get an immediate benefit. So like this says that I get two temporary tools. That's great, I just add these to the side of my board and now I have two tools that I can use. This says that I get to roll two dice and divide it by the normal number for stone and I get some extra stone. That's great, this one says that I just get some food. So there can be an immediate benefit that you get. But then there's something on the bottom of the card that's going to add up exponentially at the end of the game. So one thing that you can get, uh, which I don't have out there, are green cards. Now green cards are shown, and um, I'm gonna try to explain this the most easiest way that I can, but you add up these cards. So let's say that I have seven of these cards. If all of the symbols on the bottom of these cards are different, then I get to multiply them by themselves. So let's say that I have seven cards and all seven of them, seven of them have different symbols. Then seven times seven, I could score 47 points off of these uh, green cards. And this goes all the way, I mean 49, forgive my math. Um, and this goes all the way up to eight. So I could get up to 64 points, which I have before because people weren't paying attention, but I've gotten 64 points off of those green cards. That's huge. You can almost lap the board, come back around and pass somebody up just off of those green cards. So don't overlook them. Then the other thing that you could get are multipliers of things that are out here on the board. So there's uh, this one right here says, you get two times the number of fields that you have. So during the game, if you start getting ahead in fields, you're gonna say, hey, look at that, I've got like six fields. 
at the end of the game, that's not going to be worth any points to you at all unless you get one of these cards. And now I've got two workers times my six, I get 12 extra points. Um, this one is two times the number of huts that you have. So at the end of the game, the only points that I normally would get off of my huts are what I got during the game. So I got my 15 points, 12 points, 10 points, whatever, that's it. But if I have this card, now all of a, all of a sudden, these buildings are now worth something else. So this would be two times the number of buildings that I have. So let's say I had seven buildings, that could be an extra 14 points. This one right here says I get one times the number of cavemen that I have. So at the end of the game, same kind of story. I wouldn't get any extra points if I had gotten all 10 of my cavemen unless I had one of these cards. And let's say that I had three or four times the number of cavemen that I have. That could be like 40 extra points. That could be huge. At the end of the game, um, your resources that you have left over are only worth one point a piece. So that's not a very good return on your investment. So you want to build huts while you can. Uh, food is not worth anything at the end of the game. You add up all of your points that you got from your huts, from your cards, whoever has the most points wins the game. That is Stone Age. This is a great introduction to worker placement games. If you haven't played a worker placement game before, this could be a great place for you to start um, because it's pretty simple, it's not that complicated, and the rewards are fun. The, the exponential multiplying points at the end of the game is a lot of fun, that's really exciting. And so the, my favorite thing at the end of the game is people have these stacks of cards, you know, and nobody knows unless they've been counting or keeping track of what they have. And so uh, at the end of the game, I just love it when people say, okay, I have this, that means I get 20 points, and then this, and that means I get 40 points, and then this, I get 30, you know, whatever points. And so that's so much fun to see how that adds up at the end of the game. And there's multiple ways to victory, so you're not going to play this game the same way all the time. This is entry-level worker placement, so chances are you might get into this game and then want a whole lot more, and there are a ton more games that offer a whole lot more complexity than this that I do love. But this is basically, this is your doorway, your gateway into this world of worker placement games. Okay, so it might be obvious, and I've talked about this game a whole lot, like on our podcast, I mentioned this a bunch of times, in our Hall of Fame videos, different videos that I've talked about, this game has come up a lot, so this is definitely a buy it game for me, it gets a green rating, you should buy this game if you like worker placement, if you don't even know if you like worker placement, find somebody that maybe has this game, play it and see, but this for me is no doubt a buy it game, go add this to your collection. Alright, that's it, uh, thanks for watching The Board Game Closet, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, channel yet make sure you click that button if you like this video hit the thumbs up and share it make sure you check us out online boardgamecloset.com we've got a weekly podcast that drops every single tuesday so check that out i interview uh, publishers designers i talk about games that we don't show on this channel um, so we do a whole lot of stuff uh, so check that out boardgamecloset.com and as always support your local hobby shop we'll see you later